Chapter 6 is all about actually taking what we've learned thus far and designing real-world packages that will accomplish what you need to do. So this is actually a, a, it's a very important chapter. It's not necessarily a large chapter in terms of the number of videos in it. Certainly it's no chapter 4 where we had 70 some odd videos. But it is very, very important. It really is going to tie into chapters 4 and 5 primarily. So you really need to have a good handle on using chapters 4 and 5, all the various tasks, as well as how to do package configurations, variables, and expressions. Because throughout various packages and projects in this chapter, we're going to take a look at a lot of different tasks, how to customize them with variables, expressions, how to change them using package configurations. So I will say these are prerequisites here. So I would not suggest that a new person coming into SSIS jumps right into Chapter 6 and says, hey, I need to learn how to loop through all files in a folder, so I'm just going to skip all of that and start right here. If you do skip all of that, you're skipping some fundamentals. And I think maybe you could get what you needed out of it and maybe go on. But I would really suggest that you, you kind of, if you're particularly new, that you follow that, that path of watching the previous chapters to get to this point. Okay, enough preamble here. Let's talk about the real-world scenarios that we're going to cover. Um, I, I tried to pick some of the most common movement scenarios, some of the most common things that I've seen through the years. Uh, in particular, what I was really interested in was things that I have to do repeatedly on multiple projects. So, you know, I... I, I at some point, you kind of have to decide the scope of a course, right? I mean, that's kind of the course author's decision difficulty is what goes in and what doesn't go in. And when it came to this chapter, what I did is I said, well, you know, there's lots of really cool real world stuff that we could show. But in the end, we didn't want to have a 60 or 70 hour course. So we had to kind of call it and choose certain things. And my criteria for choosing the items on this page was, was this something that I needed to use on multiple projects? Or was it a one-off thing that was just kind of really cool? Well, I went with the option of this needed to be, to make it into this chapter, something that was found in multiple projects. Multiple times in my career as an SSIS developer consultant, I've had to work with these particular scenarios. So that's what's in here. So we're going to st first start off talking about looping through all the files in a chapter. And then we're going to talk about dealing with XML, a very common question, a very common need. Uh, particularly when you're dealing with uh, healthcare records that are going to be exported or imported in XML. Now, another one is the idea of performing bulk loads. So you're given a text file. This is going to be kind of tied in with uh, this section here. You're given a text file that has X number of rows, and you need to ex import rather those rows into SQL Server. Well, there's going to be a lot of things that we want to cover. We're going to talk about recovery model decisions, um, what effect the check constraints have, what effect does dropping indexes on the table have. We're going to really try to optimize that process of loading into SQL Server. Another one that most people have to deal with is emailing files, whether it be a log file, an Excel report, uh, whatever it is you need to do, we're going to talk about how to do the email. And if you remember watching our earlier videos on the send mail task, you'll probably remember how um, useless it was. And so we're going to have to find ways to be creative with our send mail task. Uh, or we're going to have to find ways to be creative with other tasks. So we'll talk about using that in Chapter 6. Now, the final bits over here are very important, uh, performing incremental updates. In other words, you're given uh, a data set, and you're given a destination, and you only want to 
update the destination with the things that have changed since the last time you did this update. For example, you only want the new rows to be added, but if there are any updates, you want those to update your new destination. And if any rows have been deleted at the source, you then want them deleted at that destination as well. So you don't want to completely wipe away the destination and start fresh. You just want the changes since the last time you did the update, uh, last time you ran the package. Uh, then we, I, I kind of grouped this next one under just FTP task examples because there's going to be several of these. You need to use expressions or variables to put remote file names, remote paths, local file names, local paths, and I, we'll just kind of group these under FTP task examples. And the final bit in Chapter 6 is for those of you that are working with SSAS, SQL Server Analysis Services, and it's on how to populate and process those cubes. I will go ahead and tell you once we finish with the FTP task, if you are not using analysis services, don't even worry about watching the SSAS cubes videos. It, it won't really give you any help. Um, to finish that that part out, you know, you always can come back to this course as a resource. You know, the, you, you don't have to watch it all. You do not have to watch every single video in the course. You can watch the sections that apply to you now. And if that doesn't apply to you now, then skip it. Come back to it in the next six months, a year, two years, if it does apply to you. Uh, so this, as I mentioned, it builds on the previous knowledge. We're creating these. Uh, so that they will be drag and drop. You'll be able to drag these into your workshop and create real world packages to do this from them. So these videos will have files attached to them that you can run on your computer. Now you will have to customize these, like my computer names and server names and database names are probably going to be different from yours. You might wish to change variable names and other things. So don't expect to be able to load these up and run them immediately. You might have to change a few names here and there. Uh, to accurately run these, if you do want to follow along at home and get the same thing that I'm doing, you will need to install the SQL Server 2008 samples and the sample databases. And if you go to the very final video in Chapter 1 for Course 158, I show you how to install all of that. That way, once you have done all of that, you're up to date. You're ready to go. Now, you can safely skip this chapter if you already know how to do all of those things that I outlined. Okay, you're totally fine skipping this one. Or, if you don't need to do any of those real-world projects that I mentioned, skip this whole chapter. It's totally fine. I'm not necessarily teaching you new knowledge in this particular chapter. This chapter is really more about tying together the tasks with the variables, the expressions, and showing you how we really do things in the real world. Now, if you do skip the chapter, there are a couple of good chapters coming up. Uh, chapter 7 if you want to learn how to use the dot, uh, use .NET with the script task, with the script component, that's where we're going to go. Chapter 8 is all about using the SQL Server agent to schedule jobs and scheduling those packages, dealing with package configurations in job scheduling, uh, dealing with the package roles and package security. And Chapter 9 is for anybody who is on SQL Server 2000 and wants to upgrade their DTS packages to SQL Server 2008 SSIS. Okay, so I'm ready. The rest of this chapter is all demo, so I'll see you there.